Today we're talking about action figures. We're going to actually look at the top 20 strangest vintage ones out there that are worth some big money. Hey, it's Don. Today we're talking about action figures. We're going to actually look at the top 20 strangest vintage ones out there that are worth some big money. Now, most of these will be ones you've probably never seen or heard of. Some of you, depending on when you grew up, may have seen some of the lines of these, but these specific figures, these action figures here, are the rarest of the rare, some of the strangest and bizarre ones as well. We'll begin by taking a brief look at the history of action figures from the very earliest days. What do we have here? It's Castle Grayskull. And it's mine. Now, the first appearances of action figures varies by who you actually talk to. Many people consider this 1939 ideal composition Superman figure here to be the very first one. Most of the earlier ones back in this time frame were actually marketed as dolls, as the box actually shows here as well. Now, that information isn't actually true if you dig into it and you look farther back. In the 20s, a company by the name of Schoenhut, which actually made wooden pianos, also made some jointed figures. Now, they wouldn't have been considered action figures back in those days because that wasn't a term that was used back then. But for all practical purposes, if you saw this hanging on a peg in a Walmart or something, it would be an action figure. And this is from the 20s. Most of the characters from the 20s and 30s were available as action figures just like this. Now, you can even go back farther than that to 1916 where you can see some articulated figures. This one here is Danny Daddles, and he's basically an action figure of sorts. His neck moves just like a modern-day action figure, and it's all made out of wood. It is a character. They did create some comic-type material for it also. The box very easily shows you the age on it. It is dated 1916. Now, going back even farther to an artist by the name of Outcult, Yellow Kid was a very popular character back in the 1890s. They also had composition figures that looked pretty much like the Felix. A lot of these as well are in the same size range as modern day action figures. 6 inches, 8 inches, 10 inches, 12 inches. Now even though those are basically action figures by today's standards, what I would consider the first true action figure that meets all the criteria with joints, ball joints, movable hands, arms, and the whole world that was geared towards kids would be this figure here. This is a Swiss one made in the very early 1920s. It's made out of tin. Now, if this was, say, dressed up as Spider-Man, you might not have a single clue that this is that old. It has modern-day construction with the ball joints you would see on some of the modern-day figures. I believe this one here is 8 inches as well. In every regard, this as well would be a modern articulated action figure. Oh, oh. Now, when it comes to odd, bizarre, unique, and strange action figures, there are tons of them out there. But the vast majority of those do not carry much of a value or could have been mass-produced in great quantity. The ones that are worth the most are always the scarcer, the odder, the more unique across the board. They always sell for the most, like this Japanese Sofubi one here. Bullmark is another name you'll see on these. They tie in with the earlier Ultraman series as well. Highly collected, very scarce, but strange beyond belief in not just the color, but in the creation, the shape, and the design. There are as well many of these sorts of figures that came out in Japan in the 1960s. Most of them are tied to Bullmark. Monsters, Ultraman, Godzilla, which is reminiscent of this one right here. There are huge lines of these with all sorts of varying different styles of figures, as well as color schemes. The more bizarre and odd they are, the scarcer they are, the more they will sell for. This one's actually missing its tail, and it's still sold for 375 bucks. Now, Poppy, a very well-known Japanese company, made a lot of these strange, more bizarre, unique toys. Now, this is a Machinder, a Kamen Rider, which is a very well-known TV series from Japan. It came out in the early 70s. There are tons of different toys, vinyl figures like this one here. 
They also made large vinyl action figures of the very same character line. Most of the characters were well represented in the toy lines that they produced as well. Most of them sell for hundreds of dollars, again, like this one here. Uh oh, it's Gore, king of the Terrans. Gore flashes his red power ray. Imagine Luminos has the power on and blocks Gore's ray with his own light. Now, some action figures are more than just action figures. They would have been parts of other things. This is Horrible Hamilton from Hamilton's Invaders. And it was more so a game slash action figure play set that came with soldiers and you would have to fight the invading alien figure here. He always sells for some good money. Now, this is Dr. Evil from the Captain Action Line. This is kind of tied to G.I. Joe somewhat. It has the same basic structure figures, the whole works. You can see how unique, how different he is. He always sells for some phenomenally good money. He has a mask that would go on as well to cover his identity up. Similar to the $6 million man in Maskatron. He is well collected, well sought after, but a very strange looking character to say the least. Now in 77, Star Wars was just ramping up toy production. The movie was just out. Everybody was clamoring for the toys and Kenner didn't have them all out at that point. Many of the other companies like Ideal did knockoffs. Toys that resembled the characters from Star Wars, but not quite the character themselves. This is Night of Darkness. If you look at the box, they're actually trying to make it look like C-3PO and R2-D to, as well as X-Wing fighters in the artwork. It's a star team member. It is a unique figure. You can see the other characters shown on the back of it. Zeroid and Zem-21. Very, very obviously a knockoff of C-3PO and then a somewhat knockoff of R2-D2. He is one of those odd, bizarre, unique figures that really didn't have much around it other than trying to knock off Star Wars. This you've got to see. Yes, that riotous family of goofy ghouls invites you to join them. Now, as I said, Remco made a lot of decent action figures, a lot of ones that can sell for some really good money. Now, this is Herman Munster from the Munsters, played by Fred Gwynn. Well-represented figure here. It's a big-headed figure. It's kind of unique. This is the sort of thing that really made Remco a well-known name back in those days. At the height of the series, these figures were high sought-after items. They still sell for some pretty darn good money here. This one went for over $500. Now, here's a sealed Manglers. Now, this does fall into the action figure line. He's actually made out of a spongy-type material where you could rip them apart, stick them back together, and he would reform kind of into to his same figure. Now, you could only do that so many times before he wouldn't stick back together. He's in an egg, actually, and sometimes you can run into just the egg without the figure. Now, one of my favorite toys from my childhood, which came out in the 70s, were Micronauts. Now, Micronauts were actually the U.S. version of Microman, which came out years before in Japan. Now, this is Spy Magician from the Microman line from Japan from the very early 1970s. This is the real deal. And this was put out by my favorite Japanese toy company, Takara. Takara made a ton of toys in my childhood that I fondly remember and still actually have some of right now. This one sold for close to $200 in the box. They made a lot of these. It's not a scarce toy in Japan, but over here, they're seldom seen in the box like this. Now, this is an example of the Micronauts right here. This is Galactic Defender. Galactic Defender came in multiple different colors. The standard version in gray is actually shown on the box. There are many different versions. This is typically what you'll find on this. Now, Microman and Micronauts are not the strangest of these characters here. Now, in 1980, when the Micronauts line actually died off and they stopped selling them, stopped producing new ones, the rights were sold by Takara to another company, and they produced the interchangeables, which were basically Micronauts with different color schemes, and in some cases, they were the exact same figure, just with a different manufacturing name on it. That's really about the biggest difference you can find in most of them. What was considered Microman in Microman's universe, or Time Travelers in a Micronauts universe, was was now considered a Cosmo Man in the Interchangeables world. Now, the Interchangeables didn't last very long, and they died off as well. And a company by the name of Pac bought a lot of the parts and pieces and some of the molds and started throwing them together under a new name called Lords of Light. 
Now, most of the characters do not resemble the Micronauts, the Interchangeables, or Microman, but they use different parts from all of those figures to combine and make new figures. They are extremely scarce because they were cheaply made and the plastic was very brittle, so almost none of them survived. They never made a lot of them to begin with either. Just random figures, even the most basic, most common ones, still sell for 40 or 50 bucks in any condition out there. Even parts and pieces of them can sell for $100 plus without any problem. Now, Nepos here on the right is basically Micronaut legs, feet, and arms from various different characters that were thrown together to create a totally new one. The body is unique. The rest of them are carryovers from the Microman, Micronauts, and Interchangeable line. These are some of the most bizarre, strange figures you can run into out there. Most of the time, you're not even going to find them when they are complete. This still sold for over a hundred bucks. At last, I've got He-Man trapped with my walls of evil. Now, with many of the action figure lines, some of the figures were only made in specific countries. That even goes for Micronauts, Microman, and the whole works. Most lines had a variant or a character that didn't exist anywhere else but in a specific country. This is Megator. It's a very large, I believe, the largest figure from the Masters of the Universe He-Man collection. It's an original. It's from 86, and I do believe this one was only available in Italy. Diehard collectors these days hunt these down religiously. This one sold for almost $2,000 which is about average price for any of these strange, bizarre figures. The size on this one here throws many people off, and they have no clue that it actually belongs in the vintage He-Man series. Oh yeah? Bashasaurus bashes evil away! Skeletor He-Man figures and Bashasaurus vehicle each sold separately. Bash away! Bashasaurus, Bashasaurus. Now, obviously, He-Man was extremely popular. They sold millions of the figures, like Sun Gold, which created these Galaxy Warriors figures here. They're basically He-Man figures that were knocked off, almost identical. Same basic accessories in the whole works. These are exceedingly rare. I don't believe they were on the market very long. I do believe there was a court challenge over these, but they're still out there. They still show up. They do resemble most of the characters you may see, as well as new and different characters that you cannot find in the He-Man line. This is exceedingly rare. This set, this lot, mint on card, even though it's a knockoff, still sold for almost $8,000. Another very popular TV series when I was a child was Space 1999. This is actually Zython. Only appeared, I believe, in one episode for a small amount of time. This is one of the hottest, hardest to find figures from that entire collection. Everybody had the main characters, but this one here wasn't available in most stores. You couldn't find it hardly anywhere. He sells for thousands on the card, even if he's not in so great condition or the actual bubbles yellowed like this one here. Now, here's a strange, bizarre figure here from Sid and Marty Croft. H.R. Puff and Stuff was a very popular show for about a year, and they did make toys from it. This is the mayor from that series. Sid and Marty Croft are very well known for Land of the Lost, which obviously had the movie with Will Ferrell in it. It all ties back to their earlier series here with H.R. Puff and Stuff. Introducing the G.I. Joe Spaceomatic. Spaceomatic, the futuristic space vehicle you program yourself to make it go where you want do what you want. Now you might not think this one is strange at all here. It just looks like a Barbie doll of sorts, a nurse figure here. The strange part about this one, it's from the large size vintage original G.I. Joe series that came out in the 60s. Most people don't realize that they made a few nurses, a few characters that weren't actually combat soldiers. And this is one of them here. There are a couple versions of it as well. Most of the buyers for the G.I. Joe action figures from the 60s and early 70s were boys. Most boys in those days would not have wanted a female doll like this here so they weren't very well collected most people didn't buy them it was kind of an odd strange character to add to the set a good necessity obviously but it is strange for G.I. Joe, and that is why it sells for so much money. Very seldom will they turn up very seldom will you find one complete and in this nice of condition now, the Thundercats was another series from the 1980s, which has a huge fan base, even still to this day. This is Tungasaurus, one of the scarcest ones from the entire line. It had a little grip on the back, and you could squeeze out a tongue to grab one of the other characters' figures, Lionel, or whoever you were actually having him combat. Interesting, unique, these always sell for thousands of dollars. It's a kind of bizarre toy because it's basically a head with a handle and a tongue that flies out of his mouth. 
doesn't have a body. It's just this what you see here. Now, in 1984, Eastman and Laird published the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic books, and it created a vast market of action figures and collectibles tied to it. Tons of other companies tried to knock off on the bizarre mutant figures. You'll see all sorts of other lines, like this Streetwise series here from the 90s. These all sell for hundreds of dollars. I believe there are four different action figures from this line. Now, this is Street Sharks, again, another knockoff, so to speak, of the Ninja Turtles, all along the same lines. This is a mail away only talking rips. This was available through Mattel, highly sought after these days. It goes for thousands of dollars. Now, this one didn't come in a display box like most of the other ones, again, because it was a mail away only. Most of the time, this one turns up loose and not in the box with none of the other things with it. You had to put the fin together as well on the back, so sometimes the fin will be missing. Just the fin on this one can sell for hundreds of dollars also. Now, the idea that you could change out faces and have masks wasn't a huge deal in action figures. There were many of them available throughout the time. But for me, a robotic Bigfoot figure is a little strange, a little bizarre. The idea that you'd have to create one is just kind of out there. He was actually played by Andre the Giant as well, if you didn't know that. So this is one of those that's highly sought after. He can easily sell for a thousand bucks plus if he's in great condition with the box like this one here. The evil Rulons build a dam to cut off the Dino Riders' water supply. Playing in the mud again, Krulos? Crush them, Cobras. With what, Krulos? And lastly, we have the Five-Headed Dragon from the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons series. This came out about the same time as the cartoon series. These are highly sought after. In all honesty, most people that I talked to had no clue that they even made Advanced Dungeons & Dragons action figures. Even those who grew up as kids in this same time frame. Any of them are hard to find, but this one is the top of the line here. One of the hardest ones to get. They did not make many of them because it was one of the most expensive figures of the entire line to buy in a store. Store. Some of these were also only available through specific companies like JCPenney's and Sears, their wish book and their catalogs. As you can see, it sold for over 2000 bucks. Now, obviously, there are many, many more strange, bizarre, unique figures that sell for some big money. But these here are some of the strangest and oddest ones that most people are unaware of. The case of the big chase. Officer Roadblock grabbed the squad car to stop Cuckoo before he got away. Well, there you have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Thunderclap comes with driver. Yo, Joe!